Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great day. I am starting a new video series called Security Essentials. And we're not only going to look at some common mistakes that developers make, but we're also going to see how to exploit them because that's a lot of fun. And I'm going to show you how to prevent them. And so we are going to start with a big one called SQL injection. And some of you may call it SQL. I'm going to use it interchangeably, SQL injection. And uh, before we get started, I want you to know that although I will be demonstrating these things in PHP because it's very easy to read and easy to understand, the principles of these videos go across basically all programming languages. You could be using Python, you could be using any of the various JavaScripts or Node.js or Node.red. You could be using an Arduino to interact with an API or maybe to log your data. It literally doesn't matter. So I don't want to see the comments, lol, PHP is so insecure. It has nothing to do with PHP. It has everything to do with using good coding practices. So what is SQL injection? Basically, anytime something happens in your database that you don't want to happen that is a type of sql injection and so if you are logging data if you are making a website if you have any instance where an outside force is interacting with your database then you need to consider sql injection okay so let me show you an example with the most poorly written code that I could and again all I'm doing is simulating that the output is coming from a user and so what we have is we have a page here where we're saying view a bio give me the ID of the user whose bio you want to view now this has nothing to do with IDs you could just as easily use username but I'm gonna use ID and I'm gonna hit one and great I get the admins bio I'm gonna hit two fantastic I get user two's bio and everything works as you would expect it but there's a problem if we look at this code you can see that there's a simple form over here and what we're doing is if this thing is detecting that something was posted on the form we are taking whatever they put in this text box we are assigning it to a variable in this case i'm doing it with php again python arduino doesn't matter the problem comes in that i'm saying go to the database and select from all the profiles where the user ID equals whatever I put in this box. Now, that doesn't seem like there's anything terrible about that, but there is, and let me show you why. What if instead of putting in a two, like I can put in a two, instead of putting in a two, I did two and then I did semicolon, delete from fake data where ID is greater than five. Let's just say now I have a table in the database called fake data and if you see I have 11 rows in that data in that database and so I'm able to view that I have these five rows now when I type this into the box and I hit go great I can see the bio just like I did before the problem is is that everything above ID 5 just got deleted in the database and the reason for that was because it basically turned this query into a two-part query it said select everything from the database where user id equals two and then hey while you're at it go in there and delete everything in this other table where the id is greater than five and so bob's your uncle we just lost over half our data in this table because we wrote this query poorly let me show you one more example um let's say let me show you the database here I have the actual database and my master admin, the person with the, the keys to the kingdom is user ID one and his username is admin and all that kind of stuff. And so you can see here that my email address is userspicephp at gmail.com. So what if I were to come in here and I were to say, let's do one this time. And I were to say update users set email equals uh, let's say my email at aol.com where ID equals one we're just gonna assume that the admin is user one we see the admins bio and then if I come over here you can see that when I refresh this page 
I have changed the admin's email. Now, what does that mean? That means that I can all of a sudden go in there and reset the admin's password and I own their project. Now, as I said, the main reason why this was happening is because I'm substituting this variable for whatever was in that text box, which means that I can come in here and say, you know, select where user profile equals two, and then go ahead and write an entire new query where I say update users, you know, so it, it's essentially just continuing on and making a whole separate query there. And you don't want that. You can get into all kinds of trouble with that. So what do you do? Um, most languages, and this will be language specific, have some way of binding the variables. And what that essentially does is forces anytime you use a variable, it to be connected to whatever the where clause is looking for. And so in PHP, you would do something like a question mark and then you would pass a separate array of that information. In other languages like Python, you might do a percent %s or there, there's other, other ways of symbolizing the fact that you are binding this. So, so now that I've added that bound variable, if I want to come in here and hack this again, and let's say update it to gmail.com, you can see that I made the text area bigger. I'm going to come in here and change this to Gmail and try to run the same exploit again. And the uh, bio shows up, but you'll see that when I come back to the database and refresh it, we're still at AOL.com because that exploit no longer works. And the reason for that is that every single thing that was in this bio variable must equal user ID or it's just going to throw it away. And so that's one very, very basic way to overcome this. But really, there's two other things you need to do. Um, one, you need to use some kind of method to what they call sanitize the data. Now, that will be language specific also on user spice. I would do something like input get uh, choose, and that will sanitize that data for me and basically strip out a lot of the things that could cause a SQL injection. The last thing is kind of obvious, but when you look at this, this is a number. This always has to be a whole number. So what you would want to do is put something in here like, you know, if bio is or if is int bio and then wrap the entire thing in that because there's really no reason that you should even check the database if this is not an integer if this is not a whole number then whatever they entered was invalid and don't even go toward the database so that's just a little example of how sql injection works i'm going to do some more videos that are going to show more about sanitizing and binding and all those other things but i thought this would be kind of a quick overview and uh, again whether you're running an api it would be just as easy for someone to visit your data logger for your Arduino and drop all your data as it would be to inject in this PHP example. So hope you learned something, hope you had fun, love to hear some feedback, appreciate you subscribing. Uh, this is a new channel, I'm just trying to, trying to get some new content for it. So anyway, have a fantastic day and don't get hacked.